Greetings, friends and followers. This is Nurses Talking. I am Del Barzi. And as always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe, leave a comment and let us know what you think. Here on Nurses Talking, we speak to nurses anywhere in the world and at any stage in their nursing journey from students to retirees and anywhere in between. And today I am very pleased to welcome Ms. Shana Melissa Stockman. And Shana is a number one international best-selling author and publisher, a 30-year nurse and nationally board certified nurse practitioner. She's known as the Biohack NP and the world wellness expert. She's also an intuitively holistic healer, certified dream builder, Trump VIP award recipient, and the Biohack MP, I think I said that, and world wellness expert. And so Shana says that she was this hopeless and helpless mm -hmm. by the doctors, and yet healed herself holistically without medications. Now, her doctors and specialists are her clients. Her mission is to empower millions more who were also left hopeless and helpless to feel better and happier. And she says her slogan, I would rather be proactive to prevent your disorder today than reactive to treat it tomorrow. I love that. I love that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Shana. Thank you for such a wonderful introduction. Thank you for all you do to empower our fellow nurse practitioners. Our nurses. Well, you're welcome. It is my it is it has been a dream of mine for a while, and I'm so glad that I've had I have the opportunity to follow through and fulfill it. So tell me, firstly, what is your why? Why are you a nurse? Oh God, I have a few whys, but I'll stick to the main ones. Um, my grandma raised me, God rest her soul. And she always loved helping put it, people and putting smiles on their faces. So I liked helping people and putting smiles on faces. And in high school, I had a scholarship and I don't know how I got it. It must have been my grades because I didn't apply. I had a scholarship for nursing. And I said, you know, I don't know if I want to go into nursing. Let me start off with liberal arts and then it'll apply to any major. And then I was in a bad accident and a nurse really impacted my life. And I said, wow, she'll never know. I said, maybe this is my calling. God's trying to tell me something here. The scholarship, mm -hmm. the, the hospital. And this nurse really be friends in me and I was like wow she'll never know how many lives she impacted and how many of those lives impacted more lives I'm like I want to do this okay all right all right that you know what that's that's a goose pimple story really oh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you and since I've inspired a lot of people to become nurses and other nurses to go on to become nurse practitioners mm -hmm. so I see this mm -hmm. rippling effect turning so, into more of a tidal wave exponential and that's awesome that's awesome that's great that's great. And, you know, I, I'm glad you said that because sometimes we, we need to realize just how the little things affect other people, what we put out there, just how big and how broad it can go. So, but I know, I know that you're all, you, you know, you're upbeat and, and all of that. I can see that. But nursing comes with challenges. So what were some of yours? Ooh, there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah, um, I know. <laughs> yes, I think it was hard Sometimes when I, I started over 30 years ago as a nurse, and when I was um, in the beginning of my career, a lot of, I don't want to generalize everyone, but a lot of physicians might not take nurses seriously, like we know our staff. And then uh -huh. they look at you like, oh, you're just a nurse. And then they're like, oh, wow, she was right, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've seen that time and time again. And now over 30 years later, it's cool that a lot of my doctors and specialists are now listening to what I'm saying. So we're, you know, uh, one of the uphill battles was a lot of the doctors sometimes look down upon nurses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as a nurse practitioner, being a female, if they see a male physician assistant, they assume he's a doctor because he's a male. So that's another challenge that I've had. I learned to advocate for the patients. Sometimes I really, really have to advocate for the patients um, for their rights. And another, I would rather, as you know, prevent their disorder today than treat it tomorrow. Unfortunately, the healthcare system would rather pay for your exactly. chemotherapy than tell you to stop smoking and pay for the pill to stop smoking. So yeah. uh, that's a huge uphill battle of mine is there's not enough prevention. There's cancer centers everywhere. I don't see a preventative center anywhere. Exactly. And the insurances don't want to cover it. And people are so 
you know, they need to retrain their brain because they're so focused on, oh, I don't want to, how much is it going to cost me to get healthy? And they don't realize the cost of getting sick is more. I'll give you an example. I just had a client the other day that wasn't thinking about healthy alternatives. So now, okay, you have to go to the doctor. The doctor doesn't make you better. He gives you two prescriptions. So that's like three copays. Then the over-the-counter, then you run out of the cough medicine. Then you're still not better. You go to the specialist. Then you end up in the ER and that's a, a huge deductible. And then you, and then I said to this client, this new client of mine, I said, wait a second, do you get paid sick time? She goes, no. I said, well, how many days are you out? Three. So that costs you a lot more money than just doing the healthy alternative that I would have recommended. And people need to retrain their brain. They can't look at it as yeah. spending. They have to look at it as how much am I saving when I don't need to go to the doctor, get that prescription, get yeah. the over the counter and lose time from work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you said that because another word we need to use when we're talking about our own health is investing. They will invest money in other things. Yes. Invest. <laughs> invest. I just said this. I just did recordings for a um, an upcoming, actually, I just launched it today. I just did recordings a couple of days ago for the my fellow nurses that are burning mm -hmm. out on how to, um, how to, um, de-stress before the holidays. And I said, one of the slides I put in there was the best investment you can make today is for yourself, you know, tomorrow to reap the rewards. Yeah. And another thing I said that I want my fellow nurses to know is sometimes we need to treat ourselves as good as we treat our best friend, right? And that was a yeah. homework assignment I gave them. Pick, think of something that makes you happy and put it in your schedule this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, um, one of the things I, when I speak to nurses, I one of the things I touch on all the time is self-care because mm. I know that we don't take care of ourselves. I know that, first of all, as women, as women, we, I, I think it's intrinsic, but also we're brought up kind of like to put everyone else first. And then as nurses, nursing reinforces that and we put ourselves further and further, further back, yes. uh, you know, on the calendar or we never get on the calendar at all. And then it's only when we're sick, we, we think of taking care of ourselves. And so I, you know, all of this burnout and nurses just having, you know, not able to, they're done. Um, I think true, all of the other outside factors um, influence this, but some of it is because we're not taking care of ourselves. I'm sure you can relate. I've been those 16 hour back to back, which is really 18 or 20. And then, yeah. you know, you're like grabbing your first bite at like eight o'clock at night and like a patient's looking at you or or the boss's wife or whatever. Like, and I'm like, like, isn't there laws about this stuff? Like a 15 minute break somewhere in like a 16 hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's true. So I want to show the nurses, like, we are important. We are worthy. We need to put ourselves in the schedule. We need to treat ourselves as good as we treat our good friend, right? Because we're we're going to be our own good friend for life, hopefully. <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. So uh, I'm going to jump and ask you, because you, it's been 30 years and you have done quite a few things. You know, you're a nurse practitioner, you're a holistic biohacker, and we're going to get to that. But what advice would you give to someone who wants to be a nurse? Hmm. Oh, first of all, because I was also a professor of nursing for a couple of the colleges at a couple of the hospitals here in New York. First, mm -hmm. I would say, make sure you can deal with bodily secretions because I've seen students get to their senior semester and then realize, oh no, I can't, I can't look at blood and urine. And I'm like, girl, you need to figure that out of time. So just make sure you can deal with bodily secretions. Um, I would say... Jobs will come and go. So please put your health and your life in front of a job. Because a lot of times, you know, in the past, I was told with 103 fever, oh, come to work. Or my grandmother dying with less than 24 hours. And they're like, hey, you have to come to work. I'm like, you know what? I've covered everyone for years and I'm never sick. Someone yeah. needs to cover me now. So sometimes we must put our health. Jobs yeah. can come and go. So that new nurse fine. But you know what, if you're miserable at that job, first of all, set your boundaries in the beginning with the new job, right? Yeah. Before mm -hmm. they get into the habit of texting you, calling you on off hours, set boundaries from the beginning, make sure you can deal with secretions, set boundaries. Um, if you're not happy at that job, keep your options open. Why do you have to stay there in misery? Maybe you're already there a year or two. But you know what, do you want to be there for the next 20 if you're already miserable? So move on, you know, get out of your comfort zone.
Yeah, that, that's right. And, and nursing is so huge. You do not have to stay there. There's nothing, no reason mm -hmm. at all. There was a time when nurses had to stay where they were. That time yes. is long and I want to show. I want to show the nurses that they can do self-care in, in seconds a day, literally. Yeah. So and, and empower more people with the biohacking that I do. So more of their clients can get better quicker. And that'll give them more time so that they too can live life to the full. That's what Sir Richard Branson said. I was on a recent meeting with him actually in a uh -huh. class that I took and he said, live life to the full. Live life to the full. You're the second nurse who brought up Richard Branson in about a week. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, I, yeah. I, yes, I had another nurse who quoted his his who quoted the 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 um the more acceptable version of his slogan, which is you know like screw it, just do it. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And also, he he's uh, the most successful people. Uh, two things: they make rapid decisions. You ever see somebody, they're like, oh, I don't know. And then it's like a year later and they still didn't decide. He yeah. said, you know what? Even when I was younger, the best thing I did was make rapid decisions. Because even if it's the wrong decision, at least you learn from it to grow yeah, rather than being the, the same yeah, You found out quickly it's the wrong one. And, and the most successful people are forward thinkers. He, you know, a lot of us are work, 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 eat, sleep. We're living in the now. We need to think, where do we want to be in three years? What are we going to yeah. do to get there? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you mentioned biohacking. Tell me about it. What is it? What drew you to it? I love, love, love it. It's like this. You've heard of hijacking, right? You're taking yeah. control over a plane. So biohacking is taking control over your own biology. We used to just think like we're stuck with our genes. We're not. We can't change our genes, but we can change if a gene's going to be expressed. So say, for instance, I first learned about this in the 70s, but it's only really becoming a more recent topic mm -hmm. now. My grandmother and all her siblings, my grandma's siblings all had diabetes. She watched her sugar intake, stayed skinny, never developed diabetes. So she had the family tendency, but what we put on our bodies and in our bodies can decide if that gene is going to be expressed. Same with, you know, a patient that uh, comes into me and they're 300 pounds and, and I'm like, wait, your blood pressure is high, you're diabetic. Oh yeah, it runs in my family. I'm like, you know what? If you ate better and you didn't have the sedentary lifestyle, you wouldn't have the weight and the weight's causing the hypertension and diabetes. Once I empowered him to realize it was more than just genetics, I helped him drop hundred pounds. His sugars became normal, his blood pressure, and he didn't have the knee pain as much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this, the, on, second, you know. the second part of your question about what attracted me to it. So biohacking mm -hmm. is about taking genetic control over your genes to decide if a gene's going to be expressed or not. We can't change the gene, we can change the expression with certain herbs and natu more naturopathic ingredients in capsules and caplets and juices. And um, what attracted me to it was a professional athlete had told me about it actually from his doctor. His doctor explained to him that he needed to activate his genes so he could, um, he could um, recover a lot quicker if he had gotten an injury. So I had seen something called ABC primetime news clip where John Quinone is investigated into this. And, you know, he tries to disprove something and it backfired in his face and it proved to work better with his own blood test results. Then as the medical professional, I went to PubMed where all the legit studies are that have to be reproven and validated. I'm like, oh my God, there's so many studies on this. Yeah. Like, this is legit. And then when I started changing it, doing it, my, my life changed, you know, paint my picture before I was in a bad accident. I had trigeminal neuralgia, the most excruciating nerve pain, couldn't touch my hair, jaw dislocated, still dislocated, three surgeries later. The meds lead to more lead meds, right? The NSAIDs, even with food, gave me an ulcer. The steroids, a better anti-inflammatory, raised my sugars, my weight, my blood pressure. And, you know, the docs tried to get you hooked on the meds, you know, the, the pain meds, and I don't want that. They're like, oh, you don't want oxy? How about fentanyl? I'm like, no, how about morphine? I'm like, no, I don't want that. So I was getting, uh, gaining weight from the steroids, higher sugars, higher blood pressures. I wasn't functioning. I was in so much pain. Now that I activate my genes, oh, and I had autoimmune problems and heart failure. Now that I activate my genes, I'm on no medications. I can touch my face, my joints, my nerves. I have no more autoimmune symptoms. So I have no meds. So I'm not going to the doctors. I'm not dependent on anything, no interactions, no lethal overdoses. I'm back to my ideal weight. My sugars are normal now. My blood pressure is normal. I'm energetic. I'm happier and I'm functional. And I'm like, okay, okay you know, <laughs> so that, that, that rocked my world. 
And I have a lot of clients too, that they've gone to the specialists and doctors and they're so used to just doing an algorithm, right? If this do that, if this prescribe that, that they don't, they don't know. I, I fuse multiple modalities. I do holistic, more body, mind, spirit. I fuse naturopathy, you know, more natural occurring in substances. I try to attack the root cause. If I get to the root cause, I stop the progression from worsening and I can often reverse it. And that gets rid of the symptoms, right? Like the yeah. patient with the gain, the weight gain. I help yeah. him stop the weight gain, eat better diet. Then he lost the weight and his symptoms went away and he didn't need the meds. So I, I fuse several modalities with the biohacking and a lot of traditional docs just want prescriptions and a lot of alternative people say you don't need medicine and sometimes we need them and sometimes we don't. So I'd rather more natural pathic approach when possible, but I'm not opposed to, if you have a bacterial infection and having to give you an antibiotic, I can write the prescription too. So yeah. I think we need yeah. you know synergistic effects for better outcomes and happier clients. Yeah, 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 yeah. That 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 is really um that is really awesome. And 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 sometimes people don't want to uh here go here I go good with that word invest. They don't want to invest the time that it takes to see the results. They want the pill to give them a result now, and it doesn't. Yeah. And you know what's weird? What's weird sometimes is when I worked urgent care, a patient would come in, hey, doc, I got the poison ivy again. Give me the shot, right? And they were looking for the steroid injection, right? Hormones injected. But some people are so trained with medicine that when you tell them there's something natural they could take to help them, right? It's almost like oh, I got to research that and check into it, right? I'm like, wait a second, you for a little yeah. tiny rash, you wanted me to inject it deep into your muscle, a steroid, a hormone with all these bad side effects. But I want to give you something that comes out of the ground, like almost like, you know, a plant that you would eat or put in your tea and you're going to research it. Like how much research did you go put into that steroid you want me to inject in your arm or that over the counter Robitussin that you take? Please, I people know. need to retrain their brains here. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is too cool. <laughs> right? So Isn't I it crazy? It, it is really crazy. It is really crazy. Um, And and I don't know. We have to, I guess, th these kinds of things start as, at an early age. If you can start it early. Um, mm -hmm. The idea that you have, the, there are things ar around you to help you delay or overcome or prevent certain things. Um, before you get to the other things that you want to put in to add to what you started with. Perhaps yes, we can get yes. there. Sometimes they can use the alternatives that I recommend in addition to what they have. Sometimes mm -hmm. they want alternatives instead of the prescriptions. And sometimes we use it in conjunction with, like if I, I've had patients with, you know, uh, stage four cancer and I'm like, listen, no, do this and that because you're going to get synergistic results, you know? And I find yeah. when they activate their genes, when they have cancer, it makes the cancer cells more susceptible to the chemo. And it seems to strengthen the healthy cells because chemo kills all right. But when yeah, we strengthen yeah. the healthy cells, they're more resilient. So I find that my cancer patients when they do the chemo, in addition to what I tell them, they're able to tolerate every single treatment without dropping out from side effects. Their numbers, their red cells, white cells, platelets aren't dropping low where they're needing to hold chemo. They're, um, they, they have a lot higher success rates. You know, I don't know of how many regular specialists or doctors can say they've had people in stage four metastatic cancer told terminal go to hospice and die and now in full remission, you know? And I can say that, can you know, that. <laughs> I can say that with confidence. And I have a lot of clients that tell me they haven't felt this good in years. And I have some that say decades, like that's huge. And a lot of them tell me they're off all their meds now, which is like, which is oh. just it's awesome. Was, was that, that is just, that's just another goose pimp for a moment. Oh, thank you. What would you say in, in a word, what would you say is the most essential quality of a nurse? One word? <laughs> One word. One word. Um, <laughs> patience. Because that's twofold. Patience. They need patience and they need patients that are people. <laughs> patience, definitely, hands down, you have <laughs> to have patience. You know? I'm asking that question. I've been asking that question because I recognize that times when I can go somewhere and I can look at someone and think to myself, that person's a nurse. 
<laughs> you know. And so I want to know what is it we recognize in each other? What is it that you know we see? I think Patience. we listen to the other's needs because we're altruistic givers. Yeah. So yeah. I want to know what do you need? How can I serve you and help you? Yeah. 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 And that word serve comes up a lot when I speak to nurses. Oh. Serve comes up a lot. Yes. I got goose pimples. <laughs> <laughs> so I see you said you're a dream builder and I see you have something called Olo Dream Builders. Yes. What is that? Tell me about okay. that. Olo, okay. Olo is an acronym I've created. It's not only for the title of my first best-selling book, Overcoming Life Obstacles. Um, I always wanted to help uplift everyone else. And when you get higher than me, hopefully you're going to lay a hand down and reach reach down and help me up. And then at the top, we're going to celebrate together our wins, right? Because too many people look at competition, right? And me, 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 me. No, yeah. I'm going to uplift everyone. So OLO, I created this double acronym. It's It stands for the title of my book, Overcoming Life Obstacles, but also Optimistically Lifting Others. It's a double acronym. So you're okay. going to overcome your life obstacle and you're going to optimistically lift others. And then when we get at the top of the mountain together, instead of yes, we're going to yell OLO. And I want instead of YOLO, OLO. And I want OLO to take off because, you know, there's there's so much that we can all help each other. You know, you know, things I don't know. I know things you don't know. Yeah. And I had started my first mastermind over 10 years ago because we're all an expert, even though we're both nurses. You might be, you know, you're better at interviewing <laughs> and other things that, you know, so we can all learn from each other. So when I create masterminds, you know, we're more powerful together than we are apart. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that is one of the, that really is truly one of the goals of this um, channel, because I really want nurses to know that we have power. We have power as individual nurses and we have power as a group and we need to use it. We don't yes. use it. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You're speaking my language. Yes, I'm starting. I just started a new mastermind, Empaths Helping Empaths, because we're mm. always filling everyone else's cup and they're draining our energy and our time and our resources. But imagine if you're surrounding yourself with other nurses that are givers, yeah. right? So we're all, yeah. we. they say you can't pour from an empty cup. So thank you, Marina. <laughs> I'm quoting you on that one. Um, <laughs> So we can't pour from an empty cup. So you're a giver. So you're going to help me. I'm going to help you. And imagine if we just surround ourselves with other givers. So empaths helping empaths is going to be my new mastermind. Can you see that? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And the, awesome. the dream builder, the Olo took off that now I'm creating another, my third bestseller book, Tragedies to Triumph. Sh okay. uh, triumphs, shared secrets to success. Because think about it like this. Most people want to become an author and they never will, right? They can't afford to write a book and they're going to spend their whole life and not finish it before they die, usually. <laughs> so everyone, I get a whole bunch of friends together and they each write one short story and they all chip in towards the cost of a book. And then together we all drive the book to bestseller. And that's what I did with Olo. And that's what I'm going to do with tragedies to triumphs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just um, and I'd love a, a lot of nurses in that too. That would be great. I'm gonna talk to my fellow nurses now. I've actually just done one, which is not yet coming out. We should be coming out next month um, with about 20, 21 other other nurses. And nice. this one, this one's called uh Let Us Do a Future Nurse. So that'll be coming soon. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah but that was a perfect, great idea. Great idea, yes. Getting, doing it together, because as you say, you know, um, some of us just don't get off the start line. And, and there's a lot that we have to say. Yes. And it's like I do the same with my Dream Builder workshop. I'm, I'm a certified Dream Builder as well. And we have to be forward thinkers and not think about just today, like where do we want to be in three years and then take action steps to get there, right? Because we have to start with the mindset, believe to achieve, I say consistent action and just never ever quit and with the dream builders i do the same thing i help build their dreams up but sometimes there's other people in the group that might have the super connection for the other person you know to move their dream forward it's all about yeah. the teamwork <laughs> i have to tell you um how does one become a certified dream builder oh well i guess there's different ways but they could just reach out to me and i'll tell them how <laughs> I've just I'm been always doing it because, you know, I'm like, hey, what do you, what's on your wish list? Hey, who do I have that's a good connect for that? Yeah. So um, they could just reach out to me. That's probably the easiest way. And I can explain it to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to put your um, contact information in the description box of this uh, 
Oh, awesome. Out. The <laughs> ShanaMelissa.com website's probably the easiest because they can go there, mm -hmm. get a newsletter, see how to become an author, or, or right there on ShanaMelissa.com. It's S, like my name, S H A Y N A M E L I S S A dot com. There's an events tab, and I have four upcoming events there. They can, you know, do a Dream Builder workshop, see if it's for them. They can see about becoming an author. They can take my new, um, my new de stress before the holidays, you know, burnt out, de stress before the holidays. <laughs> and those are cool because those are all the nurses, they get their own private dashboard. So you, and I created very small, short modules. So you can just easily in 15 minutes do a quickie module, you know, on your break or whatever, or listen on the way home, hands free. Um, so I have different course offerings there. And then upcoming, I'm going to have um, build your best life, healthy, happy life. And yeah, that's going to be a good one. And, um, you know, helping people, another one's going to be helping people build their dreams up and turn them, transform them into reality, <laughs> Unre uh, reveal their limiting beliefs and turn them into their superpowers. And I am listening to you speak and I'm thinking to myself, uh -oh. do you know how many, I don't know if you know this, um, uh, maybe you do, but somehow I, I think that you're saying these things as part of, of who you are and not really realizing the sentences that you say. Do you know how many times you use the word help and serve? I mean, they come over and over and over. And I, I didn't realize that. I would like to change that to empower people. Maybe I don't realize it, but it comes out of you just like it's, it's, it's it seems it's um, but easily as breathing. Those words just keep coming up in your sentences. That is good every thing, other I sentence. guess. Stop and serve come up together. I'm like, All right then, there she goes. I guess that's <laughs> a good thing. I don't know. It is a good thing from my perspective. From my yeah. perspective, it's a Grandma an raised me thing. right. <laughs> <laughs> Go well, I got to give credit to mom too, you know. <laughs> Tell me how this Trump award came about. They actually contacted me. That was, yeah, this this is before he was president. <laughs> yeah. um, they actually contacted me. And I was like, okay. I have it sitting over there, actually. <laughs> um, I have a gl nice glass trophy and a nice uh, cherry wood plaque. I'm looking oh. at right now, actually. <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, they, they, you know, people can reach out to you. Some people nominate themselves for awards. This was not one of those. This was yeah. their people reached out to me. And that, that's huge. That's really huge. Because when other people know what notice what you're doing, my dad, you know, used to say, you don't let your work speak for you. You know, the, the time you spend talking about your work, you could have spent doing it. And it will speak just as loudly or even louder um than what you said and and i and i see that that's what happened there your work spoke for you yes and that's how some of the doctors reached out to me because we had mutual clients and they saw them like getting better and they're like wait what happened what what did you do what did you do with my people i need to know about this and i should have saved a recent message i got from a specialist he's like whatever you're doing i'm ready to buy into that <laughs> so we should have saved that message <laughs> you know 30 years ago doctors didn't want to listen to a nurse what? You know, like I remember one time I told the doc, I was like, listen, th this, this baby has uh, meningitis, right? And you want to listen to me. And I'm like, come on. It's like closing its eyes when you flash the light and it's flailing like this. And the reflexes were all off. And I'm like, come on, you know? And then he kept ignoring me. And then finally I hear him like secretly calling from the nurse's station, the, the, you know, the trauma to, to take the baby and transport it to the trauma hospital, you know, the pediatric <laughs> uh Nikki or whatever <laughs> you know I don't want to generalize they're not all like that but I remember no. one time I was teaching the nurses this is another time I was teaching the nurses and the residents and interns were there and I'm like well that's funny because the chart says left lower of pneumonia and I hear crackles in just the right they were hmm. reading the film backwards because you know instead of holding it up this way <laughs> and I'm like so I was teaching the students and the residents and interns yeah 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 and you can and you can. And this is why, and, and, and people are beginning to recognize that because we spend so much more time with patients, uh, you get to see more of what is exactly happening and, and, and you know, increases your awareness and your knowledge of what's going on with them. So listen to me sometimes. <laughs> we have to advocate for the patients, but I think also yeah. as nurses, 
we need to start advocating for ourselves because yeah. I was guilty of just being in that job where I was miserable and 16 hours not grabbing anything to eat. My sugars were bottoming out, starting to get shaky. My kidneys were backing up. And I remember this. I, I won't call this person out right here right now, but I remember one time I was working at a surgical center and I would clear the patients to go in the OR. And I had like four yeah. patients lined up already done waiting to go in that OR room. And I always tell the charge nurse if I'm leaving the unit, I said, oh, mm -hmm. I'm going to go use the restroom. I'll be right back. She goes, no, you stay and finish that patient. Now, I'm sorry, I'm four patients ahead. They're waiting <laughs> to go in the OR. There's not not an urge. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. Bye bye. Uh, uh. You know, so we have to advocate for ourselves yes, sometimes. I mean, yes, to be do. told no to the restroom. Come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> it's I know. A little much. You know? <laughs> Shayna, I don't even know how to thank you for this conversation. It has been such, I well, the word that comes to mind, first of all, is fun. But it's also been very, very, very enlightening. And, you know, I've learned a bit. So thank you so make, much. I try to make my classes fun, too. I <laughs> and their homework, their homework assignment for you listeners is treat yourself as good as you treat your best friend, Susie. And <laughs> what makes you happy and put it on the schedule to do it. I, I'm, I'm going to take that homework. Oh, yes. And if you want the homework, part two is mm -hmm. go to my website and get the, um get the, if you're burnt, burning out, de-stress before the holidays. Okay. Those little <laughs> tiny modules. Yeah, because you have your own dashboard. You can stop, rewind, yeah. play at any time. You can, mm -hmm. they're audio too. So you could just listen to it when you're driving home from work or something right from your phone. Awesome. 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 Thank you, Shayna. Oh, it's been you. great. <laughs>